the guys that can join me in, on your schedule the first Wednesday morning in September. We'll begin in that at 6 a.m., and so I invite you to that study. Uh, go ahead and open your Bibles to the book of 1 Samuel chapter 17, and the verse 29 has a verse in it as we continue our series, The Rise and Fall of a King, and it simply says this in 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 29, what have I done now? Is there not a cause? There is a cause. There's a cause right now. And uh, matter of fact, uh, there's a cause for men to rise up. There's also a cause for prayer. And uh, there's, I want to encourage you, matter of fact, outside, on the, went ahead and moved it over here to make it easier for you. If you encourage you to sign up for our home prayer groups there's a prayer card out there a prayer guide if you will and it's going to kind of guide us through some of the things we'll be praying about uh, we've got besides uh, brother tommy's group here at the church uh, we've got six homes uh, brother clay and tracy uh, ball dj and amy mansfield scott and kelly cowden Kyle and Ashley Webb, Michael and Lindsey Crowder, and Michael and Karen Reese. And so these six homes, in addition to the church, their uh, sign-up boards are on the back back there. Along with the address, you can, of course, uh, say, well, I don't know where this person lives. The address is there. Just pop it in your phone. Uh, head on out there. About 5 o'clock, we'll begin uh, meeting and uh, we will have those times that we will be gathered together. At each home, there will be a time for intentional prayer uh, over these uh, topics here, as well as whatever you put on your personal prayer list on the back of the page. And so put that on the back of the page. And so I believe in the power of prayer. I hope you do too. I believe that God's people should fervently seek the Lord in prayer and that there is no topic, no subject that we should avoid in going to our Savior and our God in prayer. And so I hope and pray that you will, uh, even if you're a guest, we invite you to these home prayer groups. Come on out, get to know our church and get to know each other more as we seek God in prayer. Uh, there, there, of course, uh, if you're visiting, you may visit over food, over, uh, you know, Coke, tea, coffee, or whatever may be going on there at that house, and get to know one another, fellowship with one another, open God's Word together, read Scripture together, and, of course, pray intentionally for our revival Real quick, it's my fault, there's also going to be right after morning services and all the rush and everything, everything happening, there will be a short stewardship meeting in uh, the fellowship hall. If you can stay for that, uh, it'd be appreciated and especially taking care of our teachers and officers. And so uh, I was going to get that in the bulletin and just completely let it slip my mind. A mantra, a saying... David said this, is there not a cause? But the mantra or saying that I'm going to refer to for a little while in this whole chapter, if I think of 1 uh, Samuel chapter 17, I don't think of the verse that I used, which is verse 29, is there not a cause? Now this was a rallying cry for David to stand up, speak up, and everybody needs to hush, shut up, and that's the S word in our house, we don't supposed to say that, hush up, okay? And so stand, and what it was is guys, come on. There's a reason to fight. There's a reason to stand up to this giant. And of course, if I think of 1 Samuel 17, I'm thinking David and Goliath. The whole lost world in other countries everywhere have David and Goliath stories. Uh, we, of course, this weekend was uh, uh, football and as far as uh, high school football. I don't know when, when the... The exact, there's some colleges that have already played and some more that will be playing. And we have David and Goliath matchups, okay? 
where an underdog comes on the scene. I love March Madness come uh, in March in the Final Four. I love college basketball. It's one of my favorite times of the year. Fill out the brackets. I fill out 25 every year, 25 brackets. I said, surely one of them will come true. And uh, so I'm filling out the brackets and all that. And because, but I love Cinderella's. I love it when a, when a number uh, 12 team slides all the way to the Final Four or some other underdog story uh, comes along. It's exciting to me to see that underdog story. But of course here in this story, the underdog is David. And we're going to be looking at some key thoughts, some key things that is there not a cause. Folks, there, there are causes that are going to be coming up on our in our community, in our culture. There's causes that we need to stand up. There's going to be some times even in at your workplace and at your school where you're going to have to say, should I say anything? You're going to ask yourself that question. Should I say anything? Should I even hint? Do people that I go to school with and work with, do they even know that I'm a Christian? Do they even know that I'm a follower of Jesus Christ? And a matter of fact, that song that Lacey led us in about surrender. To me, it's a scary prayer and a scary thought when you tell God, do whatever you want to with my life. Hello, most of us in this room, very few of us, I imagine, have ever prayed that prayer and meant it. You might have said the words, but did you really mean it? God, do whatever you want to with my life. It's a powerful thought and a powerful prayer, but it, it does mean the word to totally surrender. And so that's the, the cause, the purpose uh, matter of fact, the word cause here, even in the original language, means a purpose, an objective, a mission, a movement, a conviction. And these are things that we have to follow in our life. Uh, let's look at the enemy and uh, the cause of the cause. There was an enemy. Let's begin reading in 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 1. It says, Now the Philistines were gathered they had gathered their armies together to battle, and they were at Soka, which belongs to Judah. And they had camped between Soka and Azekah and Ephems and Damon. And Saul and the men of Israel gathered together, and they encamped in the valley of Elah. And they drew up in a battle array against the Philistines. So that means a formation. Verse 3, the Philistines stood on a mountain on one side, and Israel stood on a mountain on the other side, and there's a valley between them. If you're in a battle, you want the high ground. So you, each of them are on the high ground on each side of this valley of Elah. And uh, I've seen pictures of the valley. I've never been to the valley. I've been near it uh, when I was over in Israel here a while back. But uh, it was, it's a neat, it's a fertile valley. Uh, it's a... Uh, I don't know about nowadays, but uh, it had that great level ground between them. Verse 4, and a champion went out from the camp of the Philistines named Goliath of Gath, whose height was six cubits in a span. Basically, he's around nine feet tall. And a bronze helmet on his head, and he was armed with a coat of mail. And the weight of the coat of was 5,000 shekels of bronze, and he had a bronze armor on his legs and a bronze javelin between his shoulders. Now the staff of his spear was like a weaver's beam, and his spearhead weighed 600 shekels, and a shield-bearer went before him. Then he stood and cried out to the armies of Israel and said to them, Why have you come out to line up for battle? Am I not a Philistine, and you the servants of Saul? Choose a man for yourselves, and let him come down to me. If he's able to fight with me and kill me, then we will be your servants." But if I prevail against him and kill him, then you will be our servants and serve us. And the Philistines said, I defy the army, this one guy, I defy the armies of Israel this day. Give me a man that we may fight together. And when Saul and all Israel heard the words of the Philistines, they were dismayed and greatly afraid. 
everyone has enemies, and uh, we're going to look at this. Even Jesus, you can live a perfect life. I mean, say the, all the perfect things. We believe that. We believe Jesus was a perfect guy. He said everything perfectly. He said everything the way God would say it. Guess what? Because Jesus is God in the flesh. So he's God. He's saying everything perfectly. But guess what? God has enemies. Jesus had enemies. You're going to have enemies. Now, some may say, well, yeah, well, I can just kind of fade in the background. There is, and I think I put that in the bulletin that, you know, you can just basically not show up, just kind of hide off in the corners. Of course, you're going to get criticized for doing nothing. <laughs> so you're going to have enemies whether you're doing something or you're not doing something. So let's be on the side of right and actually do something for the Lord, okay? And so he, he's trying to stand up. And what, a, what an invitation. Hey, we don't have to all kill each other. I'm the champion of my army. I'm the macho numero uno warrior of my army. Any of y'all got anything, any bravery, anything willing, anybody willing to come out here and just stand up to me and say, hey, I'll fight you. And notice that verse 11 says that everybody, including the king, was greatly afraid of this guy. Of course, he's nine feet tall. He's bigger than... Uh, the other day I saw a picture, just a, I don't know if it was a meme or what it was, but it was uh, on Conan the Barbarian, old movie from the 70s, and Arnold Schwarzenegger was dwarfed by uh, Andre the Giant and Wilt Chamberlain, and uh, two seven-foot-four guys, one of them 300 pounds, the other one 500 pounds, and uh, those, this guy was bigger than them. He was huge. He was nine feet tall, probably weighed north of 500 pounds. He's got all that armor on. He's dripping sweat and just poking out muscles everywhere. He's, I mean, this guy is the enemy, and nobody is willing to step up for the cause, okay? Matter of fact, speaking of our enemies, I do want to grab some verses by us as churches and church members Standing for the Lord and trying to live for Jesus, this is what happens sometimes. In Philippians chapter 3 and verse 17, the Word of God says this. Okay, guys, church members, he says, brethren, okay? He says, join in fellowship or join in following my example and note those who so walk as you have us for a pattern. In other words, hey, you remember how I set the example before you? Verse 18, there's some people not doing this. For many walk of whom I have told you often and now tell you even weeping that they are enemies of the cross of Christ. Wait a second. Now he's writing to a church and people that oppose the church that there can be enemies of the cross of Christ. Very interesting. Verse 19 kind of tells you about these people whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly. Well, that kind of offends me right there because I like to eat. But you know what it's talking about? It's talking about selfishness, people that are selfish, whose glory is in their shame, who set their mind on earthly things. For our citizenship, in other words, who we belong to, is in heaven from which also we eagerly wait for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, he says back at the end in our text, uh, the, this is the, I'm going to pick on the words of Goliath. Look at verse 10. The Philistine said, and this matches the video that I showed because I'm using, we've already studied the kingdom man curriculum. Now we're studying or we're going to the kingdom man rising curriculum. Verse 10 says what I just said through the video and what I'm asking for all the guys in this room, including anybody watching on Facebook Live. Verse 10, give me a man who's willing. But most men aren't. Most men aren't willing. You say, well, I'm willing. I'm ready to dig a ditch, fight a fire, charge what a, you know, charge hell with a water pistol. But we say that the words coming out of our mouth, but a lot of times the actions that we do don't match the words that are coming out of our mouth. We say that we're a follower of Christ. And matter of fact, um, check out Ezekiel chapter 22, and it says here, 
where God's saying, I sought for a man, all right? In Ezekiel chapter 22 and verse 30. Strong words right here. I sought for a man who would stand up for me. And it says this, who would make a wall and stand in the gap before me on behalf of the land that I should not destroy it. But I didn't find anybody. Mm -mm. 1 Peter 3.15 simply says this, Be ready always to give an answer to every man that asks of you about the hope that you have in you with meekness and fear. Be ready. Sanctify the Lord God in your hearts. Be ready. Let the Word of God be so much a part of your life that whenever you speak, every time at work, at school, wherever it may be, you are representing the Lord. Back in 1 Samuel chapter 17, the reason that nobody said anything, the reason nobody spoke up is because they were afraid. Skip down to verse 20, 1 Samuel 17 and verse 20 says this, So David rose up early in the morning and left the sheep with a keeper and took the things and went as Jesse had commanded him. He came to the camp as the army was going out to fight, shouting for battle. And Israel and the Philistines had drawn up in a battle ray, army against army. And David left his supplies in the hand of the supply keeper, ran to the army, and came and greeted his brothers. Then as he talked with them, there was the champion, the Philistine of Gath, Goliath by name, coming up from the armies of the Philistines, and he spoke according to the same words that we just read earlier. Okay, so this is... Multiple times he's been doing this. And David heard the words. That's at the end of verse 23. Verse 24. And all the men of Israel, when they saw the man, fled from him and were dreadfully afraid. Now, no red-blooded American male in this room or anywhere else generally would say, I'm afraid. And uh, I remember growing up, <laughs> and there was a show that I watched, uh, it's called Happy Days, and there's this real cool guy named Arthur Fonzarelli, and there, some of you remember, and uh, he was cool and all that, and jumped motorcycles over buses and, and other things like that, kind of like Evil Knievel, which I got to see Evil Knievel's bike whenever I got to go to the Smithsonian here a few weeks ago. And, uh, but there was two phrases that he would never say and he would get tongue-tied. And one of them was afraid and the other one was he was r r r r r wrong, okay? Two things that most people, including red-blooded American males, don't like to say, that we are afraid and that we're wrong. And he would stumble and stammer. And right here we see these guys that are just, their knees are knocking they're shaking and they're literally shaking in their boots and shaking in their bones. They are afraid. Check this out. Go to Psalms chapter 53, one, 56, excuse me, one of my wife's favorite verses and passages are in this section. In Psalm 56, verse 1, check it out. This is, by the way, a victim of David. In another instance, when the Philistines captured him in Gath, and he says here concerning fear, Be merciful to me, O God, for, the, for man would swallow me up. Fighting, now remember this, he's writing as somebody who's worried, who's anxious, who's fearful, or maybe I should say, maybe struggling with fear might be a better one as you read this. So all these people are fighting all day. They oppress me. My enemies would hound me all day, for there are many who fight against me. Verse 3. So there's people against you. People are worrying you. People are stressing you out. Verse 3. Whenever I'm afraid, I will trust in you. That's a good verse to mark in your Bible. Verse 4, in God I will praise his word. In God I have put my trust. 
I will not fear what flesh can do to me. Uh, same David, verse 5. All day they twist my words. No. Social media was already in the Bible, okay? All day they twist my words. All their thoughts are against me for evil. They gather together. They hide. They mark my steps when they lie in wait for my life. Shall they escape by uh, iniquity and anger cast down the peoples, O God? You number my wanderings. Here's an interesting food for thought. God actually puts the tears of his saints in a bottle. It says it right here. Are they not also in your book? When I, basically what this is, every tear you shed out of anxiety and fear as you live for him, God remembers and marks down. When I cry out to you, then my enemies will turn back. This I know because God is for me. In God, I will praise his word. In the Lord, I will praise his word. In God, I have put my trust. I, again, he repeats in verse 11, I will not be afraid what man can do to me. Vows made to you are binding upon me, O God. I will render praises to you, for you have delivered my soul from death. Have you not kept my feet from falling? that I may walk before God in the light of the living, and I repeat the very first verse, verse 29, is there not a cause for members of Sharon Missionary Baptist Church? There is, and when we're afraid. And by the way, what's the cause? Well, the Great Commission. What's the cause? Jesus Christ. What's the cause? The gospel. What's the cause? Calvary. Lift up the cross. Tell others about Jesus. We have a cause. Amen? We have a, a mission. We have something that we need to shout from the hilltops. We have a God. Is our God and Savior worth bragging on? He is. Yet sometimes fear of man will keep us from doing that. Matter of fact, um, that scripture, turn over to Matthew 14. I do want to grab this because this was a neat scene and just stop here briefly. This is G uh, Jesus and Peter walking on the water. And in Matthew chapter 14 and verse 25, the word of God simply states this. Now in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went to them walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea... They were troubled. It's a ghost. And they cried out, look at here. Cried out, why? For fear. There's fear again. But immediately Jesus spoke to them saying, be of good cheer. It is I. Be not afraid. In this right here, it's a reminder to me, be of good cheer. In other words, cheer up. God is with you. I'm right here walking beside you. Let's move back to our text and what I call the principles for this battle. And these echo the words of David back in our text. We've looked at different things on is there not a cause? What's going on here in this chapter as we look to what God's word has to say? Uh, there's this preparation in 1 Samuel chapter 17 verse 40. The, David does this. He took his staff in his hand. He chose for himself five smooth stones from the brook and put them in a shepherd's bag in a pouch which he had and his sling was in his hand and he drew near to the Philistine and uh, so that's what I call that preparation right there so he's getting ready for battle and we're going to look at what a spiritual battle is because um, there's an old saying why do you bring a knife to a gunfight <laughs> In other words, uh, always be prepared for whatever the situation calls for, okay? Uh, in other words, if you're going into battle, let's be properly armed. And how do you arm yourself as a Christian? There's only one offensive weapon, really two. The Bible mentions, of course, about itself that the Word of God is a sword. But there is another weapon that we have, and it's really prayer. Prayer is the other weapon because you're asking whenever you pray, you're calling for backup. Did you ever realize that? 
You're calling for backup when you pray. You're saying, God, I need your strength. God, I need you beside me. You're calling the armies of the Lord to go with you to school, to work. You're actually calling for reinforcements. You're also talking to the commander-in-chief. So that's good, stay in good communication with the commander-in-chief. You're doing, that's prayer. And so prayer really is a part of that offensive system. And the Bible mentions that multiple times. So he's getting prepared. Uh, David's picking up the stuff he needs. He's going to battle. Uh, also, whenever you're facing spiritual enemies and you're talking to people who disagree with you, and you're, it says that he went at that end of that verse, in verse 40, he went toward the Philistine. He went toward the Philistine. That means you're brave enough to start forward, okay, to go forward. And so you're going to have ridicule and criticism if you do this. If you stand for Jesus or do anything, look at verse 41. 1 Samuel 4, 17, verse 41. So the Philistine came and he drew drawing near to David, and the man who bore the shield went before him, and the Philistine looked out, and he saw David. He disdained him, for he was just a young guy, ruddy, and why do I need to mess up his good-looking haircut? He's got a great-looking haircut. Okay, verse 43, and the Philistine said to David, am I a dog that you come to me with sticks? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. And the Philistine said to David, come to me, and I will give your flesh to the birds of the air and the beasts of the field. So ridicule and criticism is going to happen. Let's grab a hold of John chapter 15. John chapter 15. Before I read this passage, I just want to get over here and get ready in John 15. Because Jesus said it multiple times in his ministry and he wanted to get the disciples ready. He, and there's one thing whenever you and I are trying to, uh, you know, we have Sunday school and we have vacation Bible school and we have Bible studies and we have revival services and we come here and we kind of cheer each other up. We got, okay, let's get ready. Let's get ready. But whenever we leave church, we're not ready. Because I think sometimes we underprepare. We don't realize we got to get ready for criticism. We got to get ready for the enemy. This world is not friendly to Christianity. Now, there, thank the Lord, there are some friendly places in, you know, especially in Arkansas, to Christians, but those places are rapidly shrinking. And most of us shrink under criticism. Most of us will draw up like a, like a turtle in a shell and just, shoop, okay, wait a second, I wasn't ready for that. And us just clam up, close up, and not speak up or not say anything for Christ. Jesus, in his short three-and-a-half-year discipleship with these disciples, he told them repeatedly, get ready for criticism. Matter of fact, get ready for threats on your life. He got them ready. And here David's not shrinking back. Here David is picking up stones. He's going toward all the other men are clammed up in their tents, shaking in their sandals and doing whatever. But many times we let fear and let criticism cause us to give up quickly. And we don't stand up for the Lord. In John 15, in verse 18, the Word of God says this, If the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. If you are of the world, the world would love its own. Yet because you are not of the world, I have chosen you out of the world. Remember that the world hates you. Remember the word that I said, a servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will persecute you also. And so if, they, if they've kept my word, they will keep yours also. And so there will be people that do this. The weapons of our warfare. Head down to back in our text. I want to read this, the weapons that he's got. In 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 45, the Word of God says this. <clears throat> then David said to the Philistine, look here, 
You come to me with a sword and with a spear and with a javelin. But I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you defied. This day the Lord will deliver you into my hand. Okay? And notice here it says that, skipping on down to verse 47, then all this assembly shall know that the Lord does not save with sword and spear. Here's the key to the battle for me and you. For the battle is the Lord's. Right there. The battle is the Lord's. He'll give you the strength you need. He will give you what you need. There's some other verses there to look up how that our battle is a spiritual battle. I want you to stay in 1 Samuel chapter 17, skip down to verse 48. So when the Philistines arose and they came near to meet David, David hurried, this is pretty interesting, ran toward the army to meet uh, the Philistines. in verse 48, okay? Verse 49, then David put his hand in his bag took out a stone and slung it and struck the Philistine in the forehead so that the stone sank into his forehead and he fell on his face to the earth. So David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and a stone and struck the Philistine and killed him. But there was no sword in the hand of David. Therefore David took, ran and stood over the Philistine and took his sword talking about Goliath, drew it out of its sheath and killed him and cut off his head. And when the Philistines saw that their champion was dead, they fled. And uh, as I put in your outline, David was brave enough, willing enough to pick up a rock and basically, as the old saying goes, charge hell with a water pistol, a sling, and a stone. I put in your outline, what's next? Are you brave enough to take the first step? Are you brave enough to move forward? Are you brave enough to say, here am I, send me? Are you brave enough, as Savet was this morning, to say, I want to take the first step? And my first step, now, well, really her first step was saying, hey, I've been saved. Okay, one of her next steps was, hey, I want to follow Jesus. What's next? I want to follow him in baptism. And that was really cool, and Kyle and Owen going up there and leading her through that ordinance. And that's really cool. First step, I'm, up, I'm, I'm ready. I don't care how big the giant is. What's the old saying? The bigger they are, the what? The harder they fall. Your enemies are no match for the Lord. They may look big to you, but they're little to God. I don't know what your difficulties are, and what your hurdles are, and what your circumstances are, but they're little to God. Next step is say, God, help me to be faithful. Help me not to be fearful. Hello. Help me to be faithful and not fearful. Let's pray. Father, I pray that the next steps are me getting on my knees in prayer, being brave enough to tell other people I'm around, I'm a Christian, I'm a follower of Jesus Christ. How can I pray for you? Help me to not bow down and fall because of criticism. Help me not to stumble whatever stones the world may throw at me, whatever ammunition the world may throw at us dear lord help us to not shrink back help us to realize there is a cause there is a need there is something that we need to do we need to be brave we may even have fear but help us to trust in you more than being fearful of man help us to cling to your words this morning Father, it's all because of you that we're here today. In Jesus' name, amen.